It was Valentine's Day, 7 p.m., a Wednesday night. Our photojournalist spots this car driving highly traveled roads across Jefferson and Shelby County. From Acton Road to Caldwell Mill to Heatherwood Drive, 3.6 miles of weaving, crossing over lines, striking railings, heading off road. Numerous motorists fortunate that this suspected drugs driver didn't crash into them. Crazy, it's crazy. Thought it was pretty scary. We took our video and showed those images to people who regularly cross through that area. It's just a miracle he didn't hit somebody. People were shocked, but not surprised. It's a sign of the times, the exploding opioid crisis across the nation. I was surprised that he did not hit somebody on the other side of the road, that he did not kill himself, but it seemed like there's a ton of oncoming traffic. And so just knowing that I could be driving and that could be a life-threatening instance, um, not only for myself, but the people in my car, and then also for the driver, it's just really sad and it needs to be addressed. People need to wise up. You know, appreciate life more. It's a frightening reality that could be in a vehicle driving beside, behind, or in front of you. We know it because it happened to one of our photojournalists. A dark winding road, a driver swerves into a guardrail, crosses the center line more than once, and narrowly misses oncoming traffic. Sadly, more than once as well. Here's what happened when the vehicle finally stopped. You didn't have anything to drink? Although they declined to go on camera, a person familiar with the driver and his circumstances told us the young man struggled with addiction. He claimed someone slipped a drug into his drink without his knowledge. We took this same video to the Foundry Ministries Men's Recovery Center, where we asked Don't Jared Crawford. Whatever. It's like playing Russian roulette. Tyler Matto. It's not just a game. It's not like you can just hit it's the video game. You can just hit restart. And Jeremy Fladstall to watch. give us their reaction to a person driving on drugs. And it's scary. Anything could have happened during that drive. I mean, there could have been somebody walking down the shoulder of the road when he drifted off, not even know he, you know, knew he hit him. Jeremy, Tyler, and Jared are in different stages of addiction recovery. And when it comes to drugged driving, all three have a story. How many times would you say you've gotten behind the wheel of a car impaired to, it just impaired? Impaired in general? Countless, yeah. countless. I couldn't even imagine the number. My situation, um, it, it involves Xanax. And um, it, was, it was right after my ex-wife had kicked me out. The last thing I remember is taking several of them and then waking up at my ex-wife's house, which was you know 20 minutes away from my parents. And I don't know how I got, I don't remember driving or anything. I mean, it's all... It's all just blacked out. In my case, I've kind of been on both ends. I've actually been in accidents because of it. I walk outside and I look, my truck's parked halfway up on the curb, and, and it's just how, through my ignorance, somebody else's could get harmed, or even my life could get, I mean, if I'd have got in an accident and killed somebody, my life would have changed forever. I mean, and somebody else. Whether behind the wheel or behind closed doors, America's opioid crisis is changing our communities. I wish that people could see it through our eyes and through the eyes of the family um, and really take that to heart. Because this is, we're talking about families being shattered um, and it impacts first responders, communities, um, you know, it's far reaching. the streets with Captain Ryan Farrell of the Vestavia Hills Fire Department to see what they are encountering. Battalion ones on the scene. We've had several calls where we've had uh, motorists, um, even in intersections with the, the vehicle in gear, um, bought the drugs and overdosed um, on the roadways here. And that's a danger not only to them, but to, to other motorists being impaired in that way. Have you guys heard of anyone driving and doing heroin? Oh yeah, I mean, that was my uh, downfall. That was my drug of choice was opiates and heroin for the past, it's been almost six years. And then, yeah, I would drive to pick it up and do what I had to do and I'd drive home or drive where I needed to go to the next point 
And yeah, it does impair you where you will end up falling asleep. I mean, I've fallen asleep in the car. I wasn't driving. I've never been in the situation where I'd be at a stoplight and actually completely falling asleep. But I mean, it does impair you enough where you should not be on the road. But as this shocking video shows, sometimes some people. He just felt like when he was going to do heroin. Struggling with addiction. He was not going to be found dead in his car. Are on the road. And he would actually turn his steering wheel all the way to the right, put it in gear, and hold his foot on the brake and cut his flashes off. And you just may be the person they encounter. Now, you could encounter an impaired driver at any time of day. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, most recent roadside surveys of drivers arrested for DUI, just as many tested positive for illegal drugs, medications, and marijuana on weekdays as they did on weekend nights. As we said at the beginning of our newscast, if you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction and needs help, we have some resources on the CBS 42 News app that you can find right now.